Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is the largest selling drug in America. What is it? Drum roll, please. It is Keytruda. What in the world is Keytruda? Okay, so it is an IV therapy for non small cell lung cancer which is about 80% of all lung cancers, and for melanoma, uh, which is the very serious form of skin cancer, but then it's used for a bunch of other different types of uh, cancers as well. So it's used for bladder cancer, it's used for some colon cancers, it's used for kidney cancer, but really lung cancer and melanoma, those are the big cancer treatments that uh, Keytruda is used for. Now, how specifically does Keytruda work? It's one of these immunotherapies, it's a monoclonal antibody, where the monoclonal antibody uh, of the Keytruda actually protects the T cells. Believe it or not, our cancerous cells are actually attacked by our own immune system. And so the cancerous cells have actually um, created a way to like block or shield themselves from our own immune system. And so basically the Keytruda protects those T cells so that they're basically able to get through that blockage and still fight the cancer. Okay, so essentially Keytruda enables, Keytruda doesn't directly kill the cancer, Keytruda enables your immune system to better kill the cancer. Okay, now, how is it given? It's given by an infusion. It takes about 30 minutes to infuse. There's no immediate severe side effects. Sometimes things need to be infused in a hospital because it's like, oh, it might change your blood pressure or your heart rate, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there are like longer term side effects, but it's very safe to infuse. It's given about every three weeks. It's actually given for quite a long period of time. So it's given for upwards of two years. One, it's gotta be like effective, like actually working. And then two, the person has to be able to tolerate like the longer term side effects of Keytruda. But people might take it upwards of, for upwards of two years. So if you do it every three weeks for two years, that's 35 cycles or 35 rounds or doses of Keytruda that the person's taking them. So they're gonna be doing it for a while. All right, now, what impact has it had? So they, so specifically, let's just, now they do it for all different stages. Stage one, two, three, and four. Stage one is very local cancer. Stage four is when it's metastasized and already spread to other parts of the body. Okay, but let's just, so let's just look at stage four. Okay, so for stage four, non-small cell lung cancer, for lung cancer, after five years, before Keytruda, only about 10% of people were still alive. But now with Keytruda, after five years with metastatic lung cancer, about 30% of people are alive. Okay, so it's not a cure. It's not 100% of people are alive five years later. Okay, but it's a dramatic improvement. Likewise, for melanoma, people with metastatic stage four melanoma, after five years, less than 10% of people were alive. And now with Keytruda, it's about 40% of people are alive. So it's like a four to five times increase in survival rate as a result of Keytruda. Okay, now, now how common are, now obviously it treats multiple cancers, but how, speci how common specifically are non-small cell lung cancer and melanoma? Okay, so there's about 200,000 new cases of non-small cell uh, lung cancer every year. And there's about 100,000 new cases of melanoma every year. And the median age that people um, get uh, both non-small cell lung cancer and melanoma is actually about 65 median. So about half the people are over 65 and about half the people are, are under 65. Obviously the biggest risk factor for non-small cell lung cancer is smoking. Upwards of 80 to 90% of all cancers are, are, are found, in, lung cancers are found in smokers, right? So it's the smoking that has led to this, right? So, so about half the people, so if you drew like a bell-shaped curve, right? So 65, and that's important for payment, right? Because if they're over 65, it's largely gonna be Medicare, either either traditional Medicare or Medicare Advantage, that's gonna be paying for it. And if they're under 65, then about half the people with lung cancer and melanoma are not gonna have Medicare paying for it. Okay, so that can, then begs the question around cost. Okay, as you can imagine, it's expensive. It's about $11,000 per cycle, per dose. Now keep in mind, Keytruda is billed through the medical plan. So this is an important point because for employer-sponsored plans, this is not gonna show up on your pharmacy spend from your PBM. Your PBM does not process this claim. It's a medical claim. So here, the physician practice or the hospital is buying the Keytruda and then they're billing your plan 
for the Keytruda, okay? So, of course, the pricing's not transparent, okay? So these are just rough estimates of what actually is being paid. It could be $11,000 per cycle. I have actually seen medical claims where the Keytruda is over $20,000 per cycle. And it varies because it varies depending upon how the provider, the physician group, or the hospital system has negotiated with the insurance network. And so there are varying reimbursement rates for Keytruda, depending upon how that network negotiation with the provider worked out. Okay, so the point is, is that let's just say you take 11,000, you multiply it by 35 cycles, that means that it's $385,000 over two years for the course of treatment. Okay, so then that then begs the question specifically for employer-sponsored plans about how common or, again, let's just use the big cases of non-small cell lung cancer and melanoma. Okay, so that means that if you add the 100,000 plus the 200,000, that gets you 300,000 total. And only, but half the people are under 65. So that, so take, you take the 300,000, you divide it by two, that gives you 150,000 cases for people who are under the age of 65. And those people are either gonna be on an employer-sponsored health plan or on Medicaid, or they could not have insurance at all. And so it turns out that for people under the age of 65, about 54% of them are on employer-sponsored plans. So that means that if there's 150,000 folks under 65 that get uh, lung cancer or melanoma every year, you multiply that by 54%, that means that about 81,000 cases a year of lung cancer and uh, melanoma are going to be on employer-sponsored plans. So then if you take the 81,000 people that are on employer-sponsored plans and you multiply by the two-year um, cost of the entire course, it's uh, in other words, the $385,000, that adds up to $3.1 billion. Okay, so that's a rough estimate. I mean, it could be as low as 20, it could be as high as 40, but you get the point. Employers are spending about $31 billion a year on Keytruda. Now, the Merck, the company that makes it, they're not getting all of that $31 billion, right? Because a lot of it is the provider markup. So, I mean, if they're, um, you know, the provider is potentially marking it up to 3X. So potentially the pharmaceutical company is get, getting like half of the 31 billion. And then the pharmaceutical company, uh, the provider is getting about half and the pharmaceutical company is getting about half. Okay, so just know that in total, that's how much employers are spending on this. Okay, like that's a huge market, all right? Huge. In fact, for Merck, Keytruda was like over half their revenue just from this one drug. Okay, now how, but, but you don't care about all employers. You care about you as a specific employer in terms of what this, this means in terms of your cost, right? So if you take the 81,000 cases over the 150,000, um, 150 million people that are um, on employer-sponsored plans in America, right? Because if there's, uh, if the 54% of Americans is about 150 million Americans that are employer-sponsored plans, that gets you zero 0.054%. So in other words, 0.054% of people on employer-sponsored plans will be diagnosed with either non-small cell lung cancer or melanoma every year. Okay, so if you just do the math on it, that, that ends up being about 5.4 people for every 10,000 people on a plan. So if you just divide 10,000 by 5.4, that gives you, that means that one person out of every 1,852 people on a plan every year will be diagnosed with lung cancer or melanoma. Okay, so in other words, if you're an employer and you have 18, 1,852 people on your plan, so you're about, you're, you got a, your employee count's about 900, your total member count is around 1,800, that means that on average, you're gonna have about one case a year. Now, of course, it highly fluctuates. You could go five years without having any cases and then you could have like three or four cases in one year, right? But you get the point. So if you're an employer with 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 uh, plan members, right? Then you're gonna be having a handful of folks probably every year that are taking Keytruda. And again, it's not on your pharmacy spend, it's in your medical spend. Okay, so 
that gives you some of the dynamics around uh, Keytruda and its financing. But okay, so fine. It's like, well, what do you do about it? So it's super expensive, right? So you've got healthcare trend in, uh, for employers in America. It's upwards of, of 8% and it's looking to be trending at like 9 or 10% uh, in the near future. So what are you as an employer to do about the cost? Okay, well, what I'm not saying in this video the clinical appropriateness of using or not using a uh, Keytruda. Like that's a whole nother conversation for another day. But specifically the site of service the person still gets the Keytruda, but where they get it dramatically changes the price. And this is where it absolutely can be infused in the doctor's office, in the oncologist's office, versus in the hospital outpatient department. And this is part of the reason why hospital systems have bought oncology practices so that they can bill, they can buy the Keytruda, and then because their network contracts are so much higher than an independent oncologist uh, network, contract, then they're able to build the Keytruda for much more and they're able to make a ton of money off the infusion of Keytruda. So just know that if you get Keytruda at like an independent oncology practice in the office, it's going to be much less expensive than if you get it done at an oncology practice that is either owned by the hospital system or, um, or does their infusions at the hospital system. So that's what I wanted to tell you about Keytruda today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.